give us, can you give us a, a synopsis, an overview of what, what's happening in the world today? Yes, I sure, I sure can. So <clears throat> we look at the political world and we can see the times that we're living in. We can look at the social agendas and the advancement of, you know, just whether it's LGBT or just the, you know, even ab abortion up to birth or, you know, just these Marxist philosophies uh, invading our schools, our universities, and even our churches, the adoption of the, the postmodern uh, view that that truth is subjective rather than objective, that truth is whatever you make it. Um, oh, yeah. We see those things and, and we know that that's one particular category. Then we know big tech and to make it as simple as possible, we just know that big tech is bad, right? Whether it's Google or Facebook or, or Twitter, they censor. Um, they <clears throat> simply just delete conservatives' pages. They, they've deleted uh, many of my uh, friends that are Christians' YouTube channels. And, and all of this plays into the prophetic end time scripture. But one avenue that many people do not study enough, I feel, is how the future advancement of technology is going to accelerate the end times. Wow. I do not know. And listen, before this program ends, Jesus could come back. And I understand that. But I, I, I don't think he will. I, that is of my opinion, that there are certain advancements that have to be done in the world of technology for certain scriptures to be fulfilled. Okay. You read about how the Antichrist will rule and reign. You read about what the world will be like, how he'll have control over everything, whether it's just people, you know, marking the world, whether it's complete control over commerce. You read these things. You read these things like the statue taking life and been able to, you know, perform science wonders. I believe that as it was in the days of Noah, uh, where I, I think that in that particular time when the sons of God came down and took the daughters of Eve, that you can read these stories of even just secular history books of what Egypt was like thousands of years ago, that they had mm. electricity, they had indoor plumbing, they had radical things. Where did it go, right? I believe that in that time, that technology was so advanced that it actually became indistinguishable from magic. And Jesus said wow. that as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be again in the coming of the Son of Man. And for these certain, uh, it, uh, for certain types of control to take place in the world through a world sovereign like the Son of Perdition, the Antichrist, there will have to be certain uh, technological advances that I've been studying for for years now that are are really gaining speed right now. Wow. It doesn't say in the scripture that the, the, the whole world, the mark, the mark of the beast or, the, or, the, or this perdition, son of perdition, he'll be, he'll be in control. I mean, you, whatever you go, you'll see him. And, and uh, some of us say that's hologram technology that will, will be used for that kind of stuff. Is that, is that accurate? It is. Um, but something else that is likely to take place is that you know, there are several of the elite in this world, uh, whether it be, you know, Ray Kurzweil, the director of engineering at Google, whether it be Elon Musk, whether it be Brian Johnson of Braintree, the, the movers and shakers in the technology industry would like to actually, and, and I know this isn't uh, news as far as they would like to put a chip within our bodies, okay? But the chips that they're putting in, they would like to put in our bodies, people don't understand exactly what that would do to us as humans it would their goal is to literally make us one with artificial intelligence you see wow. uh, for those of you that that wow. know me a little bit i was i was with you know jim baker for for many years and then i went down to vero beach florida to work for true news and while there i was a uh, i was a correspondent for for the next tech news and we traveled to many places around the world to learn about the future of technology. And just to put like a monetary value on it, these were very expensive conferences that we were going to. And not just your average Joe could go to these. You had, mm. you know, if it was a two-day conference, some of these, some of the times these conferences were two, three, four, five thousand dollars per person. I mean, uh, and and it was the 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 CEOs of major, major companies speaking to us. 
there was a team of about seven or eight of us uh, who would travel to these technology conferences. And, you know, between us, we ended up going to places like Beijing and Hong Kong, different places in South Korea. We went to London, Spain, Switzerland, uh, you know, and, and places in the United States too, like Vegas and, and Silicon Valley a few different times. But what these people would often say, Philip, and I believe them, you see, I was in the rooms where they were discussing the technology that they were building yeah. and what it would look like 10, 20, and 30 years into the future. It was an unbelievable time. Now, these people are, it was very interesting that the vast majority of those at the conference and those leading this are atheists. And I don't even know what you want to make of that. And so I was absolutely in the minority. And they would say certain things and not having, uh, you know, not believing in God, not biblical, knowing, yeah. knowing or reading the Bible. Yeah. They wouldn't realize what they were saying. And it was unbelievable. But one of the things that they would often say, Philip, is that we have now entered the fourth industrial revolution. And this revolution is going to disrupt almost every other industry in the world. So let's kind of go back to fifth grade for a moment, okay? And let's talk about the previous, just for a couple of minutes, the previous industrial revolutions that have taken place throughout the world. So the it was the year 1760 to around the year 1840. Mm -hmm. You remember this from, from school. That period of time from 1760 to 1840, it was called the Industrial Revolution. And during the Industrial Revolution, it was the rise of the iron and textile industries mm -hmm. and the development of the steam engine. Steam engine. So it was basically that a particular Scotsman. time. It was the process. Robert, What's that? Robert Louis Stevenson, a Scotsman. I just, I just had to say that. I'm sorry. There you go. My hat is off to him. He invented the, this, the, the process. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. See, I didn't have the exact name. And so that that particular um, industry uh, in, uh, industrial revolution, it was the process of going from hand production to machine right. production. Yeah. That is what the world, the world was changed, okay? And what I'm gonna say is this, is that before that time, let's say you would go a hundred years into the past, so you, would, you were at 1660 rather than 1760. If you would have told them what was going to be accomplished between the year 1760 <laughs> and 1840, they would not have believed you. Never they would have told you it was absolutely sci-fi, correct? Yeah, and absolutely. now looking back, looking back, we could never imagine the world if that industrial revolution had not taken place. We would still be out plowing. I mean, we would literally look like the Amish still yeah. today. That is what the world would basically look like. That was the first industrial revolution. The second was from 1870 to 1914. It was known as the second industrial revolution. And, and, and it's known as the technological revolution. So it was second, and it was known better as the technological revolution. Uh, the advent of, uh, of public electricity, the light bulb, uh, telephone, uh, the internal combustion engine, which as you know, led to what? It, it led to, to, to cars, it led to, to airplanes. We cannot imagine the world if that one did not take place. And once again, going back further than that, the one, people looking to the future could never have even imagined. So sci-fi. I mean, Stargate SG-1. What? A, what, a yeah. telephone? A, a light? A public electricity? What do you mean? Car, airplanes? What? 40,000 feet in the air? Oh, you're absurd. This is ridiculous. Second, now looking back, can't imagine it didn't happen. Changed our lives. Incredible. Then we go into the third industrial revolution, and it started in the 1980s, and it was known as the digital revolution. Digital, yeah. Now, this one was char characterized um, as moving everything from from analog, uh, analog electric to mechanical devices to digital technology, yeah. and many, many, many things were created during this time period. But it is obviously the best uh, best known for the personal computer and the internet. Once again, we cannot imagine the world no. if that had not taken place. I can't my imagine first, it. My, now, first, uh, my first cell phone was like a suitcase. And my secretary huh. called me up one day. She says, you need, a, uh, you need a, a cell phone. I says, why do I need a cell phone? What, 
who on earth would ever be interested in using a self? This is a, her name is Lisa. Still works for me. I says, Lisa, don't be silly. What? Why would you wait? So she got one. And this thing with a clip-on handle and antenna this big, and you'd carry it up, lug it around with you. And I'm thinking, this is the dumbest thing I ever saw. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> and now you can't imagine not having your cell phone apart from mm -hmm. you. It's true. Probably. It's almost as if it's my, my become dad one with me, us already. My, my dad said to me at the beginning, no, he, my dad's been dead before the iPhone developed. And I have an iPad that I watch soccer on. I love soccer. And I'll say to my son, Andrew, driving somewhere 80 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour down the road and uh, watching an iPad and live from, from the United Kingdom. And, and I'm watching them playing live in tr Old Trafford. Manchester United is my favorite team. And I'll, I'll say to Andrew, if my dad could see this device that he could sit, it's this thin, and he can sit and watch television live from Britain, it, he, would, he would have said to me, Philip Cameron, this is the most unbelievable thing I've ever witnessed in my life. That's the difference. Exactly. I, and now, the, and now, yeah. now technology is... It's an, and it's an exponential form. Yep. We are doubling tech, technological advances every 18 months. Oh my goodness. And that is why right now, and people don't even understand the significance of the time period that we're in right now. Because we have, in 2021, and it started about three years ago or so, if I really put a date on it, we've entered into the fourth industrial revolution. And the fourth industrial revolution, it, 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 it's, it's building off of the digital revolution. And the fourth industrial revolution is going to be characterized by, quote, representing new ways in which technology becomes embedded within societies and the human body. The new revolution will be marked by nanotechnology, quantum computing, autonomous vehicles, robotics, artificial intelligence, emerging blockchain technologies, that's like cryptocurrency, and all things IoT, which means Internet of Things devices. The new era will disrupt almost every other industry in the world. So yes, it's gonna be represented by in new ways in which technology becomes embedded within societies and even the human body. And that's think terrifying. about this. Terrifying. There will be a day where those living on the earth will look back and they won't be able to imagine a life in which we aren't embedded with technology.